fascinating discussion because we finally have Bangalore's very own IASC. And just to give a quick brief on what Art Park is, so this was a hub where research meets entrepreneurship. It started in 2020, and the uh, and they also have a startup incubator called Art Garage and. Uh, they have been incubating some really interesting robotics as well as uh, autonomous systems and AI startups. So uh, just to begin with, um, Professor Bhardwaj, I would like to start with you. Um, Art Park started in 2020 and the whole Gen AI and AI explosion sort of happened by the end of 2022. So just wanted to get a sense, has the kind of startups that has been approaching you sort of changed in the past couple of years? How are the cost structures as well as the funding uh, scenarios shaping up at this point? Um, see, in Art Park, when we uh, started it, we were very conscious of having that connect with the physical world. Um, you know, the, uh, that's where the robotics really comes in, right? Um, if you take pure AI, it is just living in the data world. Uh, but uh, we felt that it's kind of important for uh, Art Park and also I, I think it's important for India to be in touch with uh, the physical world, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, um, chemical processes, biological systems, uh, you know, other kinds of systems, uh, also uh, eventually leading to manufacturing of hardware, right? So. Uh, uh, so, so that was, that, and that has continued to be our kind of flavor also, that we really want to encourage and support uh, innovation teams which have that connect with hardware, right? I mean, connect with physical world through hardware, right? Um, having said that, uh, you know, over the last uh, two years, of course, uh, Gen AI has really shaken up uh, every, every industry uh, and even academia. And... Uh, <clears throat> Certainly, I think uh, there is a lot of scope for uh, using, you know, large models, uh, even in these kinds of uh, hardware type startups. Uh, we have not yet seen, uh, I mean, we have had quite a few uh, innovators approach us, uh, but uh, because we have been kind of consciously asking for startups focusing on uh, hardware, we have not really uh, called out uh, pure AI uh, startups. But I do believe that going forward, uh, these kinds of large models will also have a big role to play, uh, even for hardware startups. Uh, I think uh, I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Sony. Uh, you know, deep tech startup ecosystem in generally has been having the problem of, you know, attracting funds. And you are at the front seat over here. You're mentoring a lot of deep tech robotic startups, right? And uh, you're also fostering them and uh, giving them a space to grow. Like, what is your view in terms of like the funding challenges? Uh, if you could talk about that and uh, and in general. Sure. I mean, uh, spent almost like 15 years in the CI space. Uh, first as an entrepreneur, so I, you know, we started a chatbot company in 2009-10, and nobody funded us at that time. I mean, people did not even know what chatbots were. Uh, because in India, you know, most of the VCs at that time, they were primarily financial investors. So they would look at what is your revenue. I mean, so revenue is a, you know, lagging indicator. Uh, leading indicator is the product or what's the technology that you're building on. So so that was a sad, uh, you know, state of system. In fact, that's the only reason why I thought that, you know, when I came back, uh, I wanted to set up a venture fund and we set up Pi, uh, you know, funded in, uh, you know, uh, it was... Uh, of course, 30, 32 million um, uh, early stage venture fund, and it supported around 13, 14 AI companies. Uh, we realized that there is a big challenge uh, from two perspectives. One is that you know investors don't understand the risk, right? So they have to be able to quantify the risk. If they are coming from financial background, they can understand if it's there on the Excel sheet, but they can't understand the product risk. They can't understand the technology risk. They can't quantify whether this risk is going to be solved by putting in this amount of money or this amount of time. So if they can't do that, they can't invest. Unfortunately, uh, if you look at Valley, Valley has had, uh, you know, uh, VC investors who actually built products or, you know, done uh, these things themselves. So they understand the risk. Uh, and so in, in India, one challenge is to how do we get 
more such people into the VC ecosystem, and I'm t trying to now mentor a few funds as well. Uh, how do we get more and more uh, people who have done, uh, you know, companies who have built startups to get onto the fund side and you know support entrepreneurs? The second big challenge is that, as you said, deep tech, right? So deep tech implies that you're actually making some kind of a deep technology leap. Now that means that you are spending, you know. It, it might be starting in science, and then you are, you know, creating or converting it into some kind of a, uh, you know, technology, and then you are proofing the technology within the realm of a product, right? So that whole journey takes three to four years, and unfortunately, you know, it is too risky for any investor who is not able to understand that risk to come in and invest, right? So what would used to happen was that all of those companies would typically either the founders have to go to Valley and uh, you know do that company there because there they might get people who would understand them. And of course in US, they have invested in this ecosystem, right? So this post-World War II, they built SRI and all of that, right? So they built that ecosystem. In India, we have to build that ecosystem. And in fact, the other day we were just uh, discussing that before coming in that uh, we have not really understood this strategic autonomy part of critical technologies like AI and robotics, right? And of course, there was this popular discussion going around that should we be only doing you know, use cases and all, right? Not build the foundation things underneath it. And I find that very challenging because you know, if you don't uh, you know, build that foundational layer in India, uh, tomorrow imagine you have you know, level three, level four cars uh, you know, moving 1.4 billion people around and we don't understand why some cars are going rogue or some of them are getting corrupted or uh, somebody could actually you know use that to uh, uh, you know uh, do mischief over there or other things could happen right so so if you don't build the, our own ecosystem uh, you know and by building that ecosystem means supporting startups at all the ages right like supporting them in research when it's in the research field in isc we should be able to give them grant when they take that research, convert that into an early prototype, we are able to fund them or support them with grants, uh, which may be non-dilutive in nature, right? Uh, because most of the time, even the deep tech startups which have come out and we have supported some of them, what we realized was that by the time they get to Series B, the founders are very diluted out right. because you know the, the investors took more risk and then they uh, had to dilute. So as a result, building a deep tech you know, unicorn or decacorn is almost impossible out of India. So imagine if you have these critical technologies and all of those companies uh, may not belong to India, right? And that's a, uh, a crazy future to think about. Right. I so, yeah. a quick, quick follow-up question. Yeah, you're talking mostly, we're talking mostly from the investor side of things, right? We had Mr. Krishnan, Secretary, IT Ministry over here. He also talked about how, you know, IPR is mostly happening in the Valley and how we would like it to be happening more from India. So w what is the role of the government over here? You're talking about grants, right? I mean, uh, if you could talk about your experience, uh, Art Park's experience, and you know, what's the way forward in terms of like government support? Sure. I think Art Park got started because DST uh, seed funded it to the tune of 170 crores uh, over five years. And of course, the government of Karnataka, you know, uh, they really helped us and they also, uh, funded 60 crores, uh, of course, over five years. And then later on, the Ministry of Heavy Industries also, uh, you know, uh, give us 78 crores. Uh, and, and these are critical grants because without these kind of seed grants, you don't, you can't get, you know, something like Art Park get started. Uh, having said that, uh, the real challenge is that, um, well, these grants are great to start and maybe we can support a few of the companies uh, you know, the capital requirement for companies in AI and robotics is huge. There's a junior of ours who started a company out of CMU. Uh, he just, you know, uh, raised $300 million, right? And there's a company called Skilled. And um, uh, and that kind of capital pool depth, we don't have it in India today. And that's a big challenge, right? We don't have uh, a fund of fund or a guidance fund focused on that area. And of course, I think this, a lot of things might change with India AI mission. Uh, you know, uh, Secretary uh, Meeti has been, you know, at the uh, at the forefront of that, and I think uh, creating, uh, you know, some kind of a guidance fund to the tune of 10,000 crores or more 
is going to create that kind of trickle down effect for all of these startups because one you support them with uh, you know uh, you know uh, uh, like at art park some of these startups robotic startups they have taken 3 to 4 crores in grants to get to an stage where they they can actually have product market fit so these startups are of that kind of a nature where early capex requirement is fairly high fairly high um, just to add on to what he asked, and this is an open question to both of you, uh, Art Park has uh, some private sector partnerships like Google, NVIDIA, AWS, um, WhatsApp. So uh, wanted to understand uh, what kind of work is happening there and how can the private sector also come in and support the startups? Uh, uh, what would you suggest there? And also you mentioned that uh, India needs to build, build foundational uh, level LLMs. How can that be built in a cost effective way? Yeah, um, maybe I'll, I'll start with the uh, sure. second question. Um, you know, uh, and we had this uh, discussion earlier in one of the earlier panels and also outside we were talking about whether India should be building LLMs or not, right? And uh, I think, firstly, there is a huge unexplored uh, opportunity for building applications on existing LLMs. Okay, so I, th I think that is still untapped, and one can do amazing things. Um, and uh, you know, with the kind of data, for example, the traffic police commissioner was saying, I can imagine all kinds of really interesting applications which can be built. Um, so, so that that is there. So, and we should have people exploring that. Having said that. I think if you look at an LLM, LLM is actually a repository of knowledge. It is taking all the data and putting it in a form which is actionable. Now, if you don't have control over that, and then if you start using that for your applications to take decisions, you are relying on someone else having curated that knowledge, which might be okay for a bulk of things, but there could be a lot of specific strategic use cases where you don't want to lose that control. And uh, that is, and, and you know, there are also, of course, issues of bias and all that which comes in. And then you are relying on someone else to make sure, or kind of provide you with that kind of uh, honesty, which, which you probably, uh, you know, uh, for strategic reasons, you might want to go away from and build your own foundational model. So that there is definitely a strong case for building your own foundational models. Now, one of the interesting things which is happening is that when we and I mentioned about the physical world, right? Uh, what, which is related to physical intelligence, the way we handle physical things, we manipulate things, uh, we are able to kind of, uh, you look at a gymnast or uh, the how we do stitching or whatever it is, we are amazingly skilled and the robots are not there yet. But they will get there. And the, the way they will get there is just the way robots have been able, I mean, AI has cracked the chess problem and the Go problem, which is to use lots of data, lots of self-playing and so on. And so creating foundational models, what are called LQMs, you know, that is kind of the new buzzword coming in, large quantitative models based on physics or chemistry or physical data, right? So that is something which is a huge opportunity which we should kind of not get left behind. And uh, it's also tied to kind of what Manish was talking about, which is AI for science. Because, you know, you can have, you know, a lot of this data will also come from uh, simulations and, yeah. and, and computations. So what is called scientific AI. So you'll have high performance computers running the CFD calculations, giving data, which then gets used to train these kinds of models along with some physical uh, measurements and so on. So I think there is a huge opportunity coming up with this large quantitative models. And uh, uh, some people are also talking of large action models, which is really crazy and scary. Action models are models which will allow you to take actions. And, okay. uh, we are uh, and running you know, little, I'm sorry to yeah. cut you short. We are running a little short oh, yeah. of time. So I'll just uh, uh, hand it over. I have a last question for both of you, and I would request you to keep it a little short. Like, you know, we have the India AI mission. We have, there's also the talk of, you know, uh, the AI innovation fund as such, you know. And I'm guessing not just Art Park, but others also we would be interested in tapping into that, right? Uh, so, so my question would be, you know, what what would be your vision for the future in terms of like, you know, getting more funds and you know, would you be tapping into the NDI mission and and there's also the non-personal data sets platform that's going to come up. How is the, how is that going to help your, uh, you know, the, the startups that are in IIT Art Park and just, yeah. Uh, 
I think one is that like the opportunity is massive, right? And often I see that a lot of people talk about that, hey, we, you know, uh, whether the AI robotics is going to take away jobs. And of course, it is going to displace a few jobs, but it's going to create many, many more jobs. And I think it's very important that we somehow latch on to that jobs. I mean, we are going to have 900 million people in the demographic potential, right? 15 to 64, right? I mean, we are graduating 1.5 million engineers each year, right? And it's a massive number. I mean, imagine if we are able to you know, leverage that along with, uh, you know, data and compute and capital put together. We could not just create, uh, you know, massive changes in the way we do things in India, but also globally. So I think the market is very wide open. And I see, you know, startups coming up. And in fact, today morning, I was talking to one of the startups that, uh, you know, I had invested a long time back, Sictuple. They were just telling me that they have now uh, gone live in 200 plus locations. So they, uh, you know, applying AI to um, uh, <clears throat> pathology and they are able to, you know, quickly turn around samples if you have dengue and other things. And all, out of those 200 locations, 15 are outside India. So we are already seeing that these startups are growing in India and they're going global. So the opportunity on, on that perspective is massive. I mean, 1.5 million engineers being added each year is almost yeah. like you know, building a new city, you know, and imagine all of this, these engineers are capable uh, in AI and robotics. Yeah. I mean, we would be building a, a massive AI innovation city and maybe that's what we need to do. We need to build these kind of new cities, new future. Uh, I mean, that's the only way we will get to Viksit Bharat or any of those dreams we may have. Okay, sure, uh, we are, questions. sorry, we are out of time. Yeah. I, I, anyone who wants to connect with uh, Professor Bharadwaj and Mr. Soni, please feel free to... Uh, have a conversation. Uh, that's it from our side. Uh, thank you, Professor Bhardwaj and Mr. Soni. Yeah. Please give thank a you. big and round I'm of I'm sure applause. the LQM method is going to definitely drive more demand for GPUs. Go ahead.